Merry Christmas and happy holidays to each and every one of you out there. Now, what would you do or what would you say if you could kind of have that, that Christmas feeling all year round, one day a month? Well, with the team from Video Games Monthly, you can actually do that. See, what this is, it's a blind draw box that you can get anywhere from three to 10 retro video games delivered right to your doorstep. And the best thing, this is not a rental service. You actually get to keep the games. And you can select from systems like the Atari 2600, the original NES, Super Nintendo. You can do import systems such as the Famicom, Super Famicom, and more, all the way forward to systems such as the Xbox One, and the PlayStation 4. Well, we do have our December 2023 box here, and we are gonna open this up, we're gonna check it out, we're gonna check the condition of the games, see the value for what we paid. See, we subscribe to the three game per month plan, which is normally $34.99, $35.99 per month, plus shipping and handling. Now, one of the things for me is value is important. What I pay versus what I get. The surprise factor, it's kind of neat, but you know what? It doesn't have a whole lot of, of value to me financially speaking. I want to just make sure that I'm getting what I am paying for because I'm actually very lucky. I have great retro video game stores in my area. I've got live action games in Champaign, Illinois. I've got the item shop in Bloomington, Illinois. I get to go to plenty of retro video game conventions. So for me, this is just one of those that it's an additional, you know, little gimme that I get every month. Not a gimme because I pay for it, but it's one of those where I get to get new games each and every month. So for me, I just want to make sure that what I'm getting here matches my cash outlay, essentially. So let's go ahead, let's open this up, let's see the condition of the games, and see their value. So here we have this month's box, and the way that I do this, it's blind draw style. You get to see what I'm getting at the exact same point in time that I get to see what I am getting. So we shall open this up here and see what we have first. What is this? Oh my goodness, that, okay. That is super cute. My youngest, Ellie, I'm sure will absolutely love to decorate Mario here for the holidays. Okay, that's cute. That's really, really cute. Let's see, up next, what do we have? We have our card, oh, we have a one-up card. So like I mentioned in the intro, I pay for three games per month. Once in a while what they'll do is they'll give you a one up or a two up or sometimes even a three up. And basically what that is, it's their attempt to make sure that what you are getting has the same approximate value as what you are paying. They make an effort. So that is very, very nice to see. Now sometimes that means that the games that I'm receiving, not the highest value, but sometimes value is more than just the games themselves. So it looks like we've got one, two, looks like two cartridges, or feels like two cartridges and two disc cases. So we'll start first with our first cartridge here for the Super Nintendo, Tetris 2. Um, and we'll flash the value on screen here. Um, you know, I've heard great things about this. I don't know that I've ever played this. In fact, I'll be honest with you, I may have a copy already no, what I had was actually Tetris Attack. So um, I've heard very good things about this. We'll again flash the value up on screen. Um, I'm excited to play this. Let's see, up next, we'll get our next cartridge game out. And, ooh, Super Famicom. <laughs> the boys know me very well, know that I'm gonna look it up. This is Return of Double Dragon. They're saying it's a $25 game. Um, so this is for the Super Famicom. Overall quality of the cartridge, and I didn't say anything much about the quality on uh, Tetris 2, but this cartridge looks in great shape. This one looks pretty typical for most uh, Super Famicom games. A little bit of discoloration, but nothing unexpected. So uh, I wonder if that was deliberate, if I was supposed to see that or not. And let's check and see how accurate were they on their pricing. Okay. All right, so up next we have Medal of Honor Heroes 2 for the Nintendo Wii. I want to say that I've played this in the past. Uh, $5.99. <laughs> Let's take a look at how complete this is. No manual. We do have the disc. How does the disc look quality-wise? Uh, a couple smudges up here. 
couple down there too. We'll clean that up just to make sure that it reads. Now one thing I will say is the Nintendo Wii was a great platform for first person shooters. The Wii Remote Nunchuck made that just a beautiful way to play. It's one of the reasons I love Resident Evil 4 on the Nintendo Wii. And we should have one more in here. And this is True Crime Streets of LA. Um, I've never played any of the true crime games on any platform. Really not my particular genre. This is something I'll probably end up flipping down the road. Um, no manual. Let's see how the disc looks like it's in decent shape. So, uh, and again, we'll flash the value on screen now. See anything else in the box? Just some bubble wrap and a box. So now one of the things I like to do too is take a look at the condition of the pins and the cleanliness of cartridge games that we get. Also kind of give you some tips and tricks how to clean your game. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick too. All right, so they're claiming $25 for return of Double Dragon. Look in here, my game I app, uh, 26 bucks. So pretty spot on, what can I say? So <laughs> we are gonna go ahead and get these guys cleaned up real quick. We are gonna start with return of Double Dragon. Now to get inside of these cartridges, what you need is what is called a 3.8 millimeter game bit or a security bit. I'll have this stuff linked down below. Now, technically you don't need to get into the cartridges to be able to clean them. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. I'm just gonna open these up so I can actually visibly inspect the pins for myself. Call it ADHD, call it OCD, call it being excessively anal. I like looking in the inside of cartridges, what can I say? So I'm gonna pop those guys out there. So interesting thing of note, this cartridge has clearly been opened once before. I'm hoping this shows up on camera. You have a silver screw and a gold screw, so someone's been in here before. Uh, let's see here, because I don't want to snap that. There we go. So those pins don't look terrible, but they don't look great. They definitely need, at the very least, a good cleaning. So the pins of the cartridge, they don't look great, but they don't look all that terrible either. We are going to try just cleaning it to see how this turns out. Now, uh, what we're going to utilize to clean these with, both of them, is what is called a one-up cleaning card. And what they are, is there are these guys here. They've got a fluid side and a dry side. And you basically just apply the one-up cleaning solution here. It's just isopropyl alcohol to go ahead and clean the pins on the cartridges. Now, so a couple of cool things is first and foremost, you actually don't need to take the cartridge apart like I'm doing here for you to be able to clean your cartridges with one-up cards. They're designed to fit, and I'll show you here, that they're designed to fit in the case just like so to go ahead and clean and buff the pins. I do this just so you can get a better look at the pins. Now, uh, I do actually work for the company that makes one-up cards. They're not paying for this. They haven't asked me to do this. I'm doing this because I believe in the product and I think it's a good way for you to go ahead and clean your equipment. Now, one of the cool things that we can do for you too, you can see this one's a little bit different. This is you know, an older card from a couple years ago. These really do last. This is our newer design that you can also go ahead and get custom cards made if you wanted to, like this one's got my face on the back of it. So what we're gonna do is we are actually going to go ahead and apply some cleaner to the fluid side. There you go. And again, this is just isopropyl alcohol. And I'm going to grab this and we're just gonna scrub. And I can actually already see some of that gunk coming off. Now, I do have another solution that I do utilize uh, when pins are really, really gross called Bright Boy. It's a metal polish. But the nice thing about it is it's not as abrasive as like a Brasso and it doesn't leave that white residue behind. Yeah, that look how much better that looks. You can see the, the grime that's on there. Perfect. You don't want to over clean things like that. So um, good friend John Riggs, who also has his own custom one of cards, um, likes to say this is like resurfacing a disc where you can go ahead, using Bright Boy that is, uh, you can go ahead and do that. And I mean, it's not gonna work any less if it's not already not working, uh, but you can only do it so many times. 
Uh, now that we do have it uh, cleaned up, we're going to use the dry side just to wipe off the excess uh, isopropyl alcohol. One thing you want to make sure to do, or not do actually, is touch the pins once you have cleaned them. But that looks really, really nice. I'm very happy with that. Um, so now we will set this face down. And if you ever take a cartridge like this apart and you're like, oh crap, which way does it go again? The cases are indexed so that the board can only go in in one direction. So here, I remember the chips were facing down, but if I put them, try to put them up, they physically will not fit uh, because of the way the back of the case is molded. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the correct way. You can see how this lines up with the board there. That lines up with the board there. Beautiful. We can go ahead and put the shell back together. Technically speaking, let's kick shell. Okay. And then what we're going to do here is I will still use the mismatched screws. That's okay. But one tip, anytime you're screwing into any kind of plastic or composite, before you start screwing in, back the screw out a little bit. What that will do is it'll actually set the threads of the screw and the threads that are pre-cut there, I just heard it kind of click, into place. So this way it makes sure that you are utilizing the existing threads and not cutting new ones and not stripping out the plastics of your shell. So good to see there. Do the same thing here with this one. Just knocked in. I'm excited to try this out. Um, I believe there was a reprint done of this for the Super NES, but the issue with that one was the fact that it would only work on clone systems. It wouldn't work on original hardware. Okay, so there's that one. Let's look at Tetris 2, and again, just to kind of prove my point. So here again is our one-up card. Clean that side. Clean that side, boom. I, you know, I could dry it at this point and it would be considered done. I still want to open this up to see the condition of the pins and whatnot. The other thing, I don't think this one has it, but in the instance where uh, games have battery backups, it allows me to get in there just to kind of make sure that like the battery's in decent shape, that it's not bulged or, or anything weird along those lines. There's that. And while well, I did do a little bit of cleaning there real quick, these again look Pretty good. I mean, normal wear and tear, nothing nothing unusual though. I, I don't need a Bright Boy either of these, which is fantastic. Thank you guys for making sure that these are decently clean. And I mean, even, even if I saw this to begin with, I still would have cleaned it. It's one of the things that I just do is I always clean new games before I put them in my system. Just, just to be, you know, take that little bit of extra due diligence, you know? Now, much like the Super Famicom games, these are indexed, uh, the boards are indexed so that they only go into the mold in a certain direction, so there's that. You know, very similar design, I think pretty much virtually identical to the Super Famicom. Um, so we can go ahead and put the lid back on. A little bit of schmutz there too, I might take a little bit of IPA and, and clean that off, and I mean isopropyl alcohol, not, not beer. Um, same thing there, we're back to screw up before we screw it back in. You know, it's, I love seeing games in these conditions where I don't have to do anything really extraordinary to clean them before I can put them in my system. Makes for a little bit shorter video, but at the same time, you know, it, it just speaks to the fact that they are, you know, increasing to do a better job each and every month in getting their games cleaner and cleaner. And we have two more for our Super Famicom and Super NES for us to be able to play and enjoy. So as you can see, we do have Super Double Dragon playing here on our Super Famicom. Plays beautifully. Not a great game, but it's got good value to it. In fact, that covers most of the value of this box. Overall, we're looking at about $50 worth of games here, and we paid with shipping. How about that? It's you know not quite that within about five, six dollars, but you know we more than broke even. So I am very, very happy with that. And also the condition of these games. Fantastic! I, I, I know sometimes people like to see me break out the Bright Boy or the soldering iron to reflow solder or whatnot. No need on these. These were in fantastic shape. Now, if you do have a retro gaming collector that you are shopping for this Christmas season, reach out to the team over at Video Games Monthly. They do have a special promotion where you can go ahead and get a discount for a gift 
for a first month subscription for someone. Definitely something. Thanks to those guys for setting this up. That way you go ahead and you know you can save and give someone that you love the gift of gaming. Now, if you want to check out some of the other unboxings we've done from Video Games Monthly, I'll have that link for you here in just a moment. As far as the overall value of the games, as far as just what I want to play, Return of Double Dragon, I think I call it Super Double Dragon, Return of Double Dragon is an okay game, not great. I've played it recently on the Super Pocket and it just, it's not, it's not as good as some of the other ones. Tetris 2 is the one I am really interested in, and it's only like a seven or eight dollar game. That's where, like I talked, the, the value of what I got, it's not just the value dollars and cents wise, because the most value game here probably plays pretty slow compared to the other three. But this here, I love Tetris. I've never played this before. I'm really looking forward to playing this. Now, Medal of uh, Honor Heroes 2 and True Crime Streets of LA, these for me, quite honestly, I will use as trade bait somewhere down the road. Uh, not worth a ton and not games really that I want to spend time revisiting. But that's one of the nice things too, is this is stuff that I use throughout the year that I pick up that when I'm selling at conventions, this kind of helps me get stuff out on the table. And, you know, when you see that, you know, net net, I came out, you know, equal, if not a little bit ahead this month, that gives me some profit margin to go ahead and be able to like, if someone wants a couple bucks off of these, I can go ahead and do that and pass on those savings to others. Now, like I mentioned, I've done Video Games Monthly for a number of years now. If you want to check out some of the other unboxings that we've done, I'll have those linked for you on screen right here. Make sure you check them out and make sure that you and yours have a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.